From tales of poverty to religious persecution, stay tuned to number one to find out the dark secrets behind your favorite nursery rhymes. Number 10. Ring Around the Rosie Oh, the joyful sound of children laughing and singing as they dance around in a circle with flowers. Except, instead of laughter, there are sounds of agony. And instead of dancing, there's death. But at least they still have the flowers. Except that those are to ward off the stench of death. This famous nursery rhyme is supposedly about the bubonic plague that hit England centuries ago. You know how it goes. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Circular rosy patches would appear on the skin and people carried posies in their pockets. It was believed that the posies would keep the wearers safe from contamination. Though others believe it was to cover up the smell of death everywhere. Finally, the ashes, ashes part of the rhyme comes from the fact that the dead bodies of those with the plague were burned partially to avoid contact with the disease, and also because there were so many deaths on a regular basis that they couldn't keep up with the burials. Still want to sing Ring Around the Rosy with your kids? Number 9. It's Raining, It's Pouring You probably sang this little tune when you were young. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He bumped his head on his bed and couldn't get up in the morning. When you listen to this nursery rhyme, you might think of a silly old man stumbling around perhaps in need of a cane or a walker. But the truth is, the old man is dead. He's not waking up because he's in the eternal slumber. Some people believe that maybe he just passed out from being drunk and is unconscious from a concussion, but even still, is that any better for a bedtime story? I actually wrote my own nursery rhyme. It's time to be cool, yo. We're zero to hero. There's no time to hide. Click like and subscribe by using the buttons down there, yo. Uh, okay, that, that was horrible. Number 8. Rub-a-dub-dub This one will come as a shocker. Granted, the idea of three grown-ups in a tub never seemed very child-friendly. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in the tub, and who do you think was there? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and all of them gone to the fair. Basically, long ago there were fairs that came to town and some of the exhibits were quite risque, to say the least. Now, some versions have three ladies in the tub, with the butcher, baker, and candlestick maker there as well, while others have the men in the tub. Regardless of who is in the tub, the women are prostitutes, and the men are the ones getting their kicks from watching them. A sudsy peep show, if you will. That film would definitely not be rated PG. Number 7. Mary Mary Quite Contrary Mary Mary Quite Contrary, how does your garden grow with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row? What could possibly be unsavory about a garden of flowers, you ask? The fact that it stands for the torture and execution of hundreds of people. Mary I, Queen of England, is nicknamed Bloody Mary, and her reign is what prompted the nursery rhyme. Essentially, England was having a struggle over which religion should rule, because they apparently didn't live by the expression, can't we just all get along? So Queen Mary took over and decided everyone should be Catholic, being any other religion was unacceptable. Secretly practicing another religion was unacceptable. Even trying to flee to a place that allowed another religion was unacceptable. So where does the garden analogy come in? Well, silver bells and cockle shells aren't flowers. They're torture devices. And the maidens in a row were all women lined up to be executed because they weren't Catholic. Sweet dreams, kitties! Number 6. Baba Black Sheep you're probably wondering how a cute little rhyme about a sheep could possibly have another meaning. This nursery rhyme isn't morbid, but it was a statement of the times. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for my master and one for my dame, and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. In the 13th century, England put a heavy tax on wool. Shockingly, this helped the king and not the poor people. 
In the nursery rhyme, the storyteller has Wolfer as master, the king, and Wolfer as dame, which is supposed to be the church. In the current version, there is also a bag for the boy down the lane. In the original, however, there's none left for the boy, which results in him crying. The boy stood for the general public or the poor town folk. Not exactly the happy ending you thought it was. Number 5. Rockabye Baby If you answer honestly, you'd probably admit these lyrics never seem to make a lot of sense for a child's lullaby. Rockabye Baby in the treetop, when the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come baby, cradle, and all. There are two competing theories for the origin of Rockabye Baby. One version says that a pilgrim saw the Native Americans rocking their babies. They would put them in a birch cradle and hang it from a branch so that the wind could rock the baby to sleep. The pilgrim then decided this wasn't safe and wrote a what-if lullaby for parenting gone wrong. The other version, however, involves King James II and his wife Mary. The story goes that they were unable to produce a male heir to their throne, so they smuggled a baby into the birthing room and claimed it as their own. This darker version has the wind representing the rest of the family who wants to take over the throne. So the wind is attacking, which is rocking the baby. The baby falling would be the family taking over control from their heir. Either way, the story ends with the baby falling, so it's not a big surprise that there was a strange story behind this rhyme. Number 4. Pop Goes the Weasel Another statement of the times, this nursery rhyme revolves around poverty. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought it was all in fun, pop goes the weasel. Pop was a term that used to be synonymous with pawning something, while weasel meant coat. Throughout the verses of the nursery rhyme, this coat continues to get pawned off as payment for something someone can afford. One verse goes, a penny for a spool of thread, a penny for a needle. That's the way the money goes, pop goes the weasel. And you probably thought it was about a rascally monkey chasing a weasel around. Shame on you. Number 3. Jack and Jill We shouldn't have to tell you how this one goes. Who hasn't heard about Jack and Jill? But in case you grew up under a rock, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. You probably already know that the word crown in the nursery rhyme is referring to a person's head, which already makes this a questionable bedtime story. It's about a boy who breaks his head, right? But parents are great at making things child friendly. So you say he got a boo-boo on his head or bumped his head and then it was all better. And yes, you can recover from a bump on the head, but you can't really recover from a beheading. And yes, that's what this is actually about. Jack and Jill represent King Louis XVI and his queen, Marie Antoinette, who were found guilty of a teeny weeny crime called treason, and were then beheaded. Number 2. Ladybird, Ladybird Okay, religious persecution is back. There seem to be a number of rhymes around this issue, including this one. The words of this lesser known rhyme go, Ladybird, Ladybird, fly away home, your house is on fire and your children are gone. All except one and that's little Anne, she's hiding under a frying pan. The story is that in a fight between the Catholics and the Protestants, when the Protestants had the upper hand, this was meant as a friendly little warning. You know, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. And if we find out you're secretly Catholic, we'll burn you at the stake. And burn your house. And we don't care if your kids are inside at the time. Just your everyday nursery rhyme, apparently. All I know is that it must have been one big frying pan. Number 1. Goosey Goosey Gander Goosey Goosey Gander, whither shall I wander? Upstairs and downstairs and in my lady's chambers. There I met an old man who wouldn't say his prayers, so I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. We warned you that there were a bunch of nursery rhymes about religion. This one, despite its innocent title, is also from the time that the Catholics had to pray in secret. If you were caught, you could be fined, killed, or even burned at the stake. A bunch of fun-filled options for you. In the rhyme, everything is hunky-dory until a priest is caught. Logically, they needed to take him by his leg and toss him down the stairs. And of course, 
it is also logical that this should be a bedtime tale for the youth. Nighty night, children! What did you think about the stories behind these nursery rhymes? Let us know in the comments below and take care!